presume, Stephen, that, that staff will teach across both centres? Um, I think it's very likely, uh, and you might have to be discussions about that and about who might or who might not do that sort of thing. Actually, when you think about the notion of a new school, that you would open it in year seven only, it's almost impossible, that's especially at a secondary level, to think of specialism, uh, and specialist teachers, how, how could you not do that actually when you reflect on it? So that is going to force the issue, I think, with us. And again, it's another obvious reason for seeing this in many ways as really, really as one organisation uh, and develop a model from there, it, it would be more likely to have more specific school-based staff developing as the school got bigger. It's actually an interesting decision about who might be your, your sole Campbell representative. Clearly, if you want your separate English, math, science, etc. lessons, you're going to have to use specialism from another pre-established school. If I'm honest, it just sounds so obvious that I reflect it like that. Really, really just sounds the model to do, unless you just want to chuck loads of money into it. That's the alternative. So there's huge diseconomy funding here, and we'll just pay people to sit around a lot of the time, do a bit of teaching gradually, over five years as the school fills up, they'll eventually have a full timetable, which um, is a little <laughs> bit of a model around about that with newly established secondary schools sometimes, I think. But th this doesn't need that. There is still diseconomy funding. And, and by the way, there is diseconomy funding involved. So you propose a free school and then go onto the spreadsheet and fiddle around with it. It was quite interesting to see some numbers popping out at the bottom. Um, would you really want to do this just out of interest? You could if you wanted to, just out of interest. You put them up. There is diseconomy funding over a period of five years that do, does come through in this model, but it seems to me it, it's far less and far less required for it when it's absolutely established with a pre existing school. Well, I, I think that's a really interesting question. There, there are, I'm not going to get my numbers right, but a good 450 Camborne pupils in this school today, uh, for example. This is the school Camborne is in the catchment area of Compton Village College. Uh, what do you do? With it? Like, I mean, and that's why you have to start at year seven. Um, we'd have to engage very, very clearly about it. There is, there is one simple answer. 2013 matters a lot because at that point there's depending in your estimates, at least 50, maybe rising towards 100 children in the local area who could not attend this secondary school because there's a leap up at that point. And I think there is a more straightforward argument about, look, I, either there's an agreement here that the local schools exist as part of Combleton Village College, but it is absolutely Campbell, Campbell Village College. Um, and that is the centre that needs to be attended. And, and there's a job to be done, say, and this is great, and it's wonderful, and do you know what stands are going to be at least as good here? Might be a bit better, maybe, perhaps, at uh, uh, Camborne. And, but, but there's a job to be done to be, to be very clear that that's the expectation. It, it is the expectation because the county will be clear that they don't think they should provide free transport if this school gets established. So there is, there is a bit of a lever there about you're going to have to get yourself there. Um, but we do have a job to do with it. I, I think that our view about this would be, he, here's why actually when you get into this situation, the thing to do is to do that with a pre-existing school, particularly people actually want to come to it, uh, because just imagine if you tried to do this and didn't do it along those lines. I mean, I just can't get my head around what on earth would happen at, at that particular point. It, it would, messy would be polite, really, as to what you, you've just got to run them properly, absolutely together, if it seems to me. And, uh, I would say this, wouldn't I? I think it's a very good model for establishing a new school. Why, why wouldn't you try and look to do this sort of model? And if actually that's how you get a free school coming in, maybe, maybe that's not a bad thing. And I think there's a lot of. Stephen, yeah, um, I mean, it's interesting insight you've offered. It's now a more general sort of um, yeah. question. I suppose putting you on the spot to get you to reflect yep. on the future. Uh, and it was quite reassuring and refreshing on one level to hear Bell talk about a lack of a master plan. Yep. It strikes me from what you've said, and you've given an insight because you're at this sort of yep. uh, London event, which seems to yep. sort of be reflecting where free schools were last year, so yep. an idea thrust yep. out into the public, attracted yep. the sort of, as you say, yep. uh, religious fundamentalists and Toby Young, yep. uh, and then <laughs> quickly, uh, you know, perhaps a sense of a monster was being created, and that actually it would then prove to be uneconomic sure. Yeah, I've got to, I've got to care, this is my spit but I can say what I want, can't I? You know, the permanent secretary, it would be interesting to see what he said about that interpretation. But. <laughs> and that there's now been a sort of a pulling back, and although they've been yeah. talking about autonomy and yeah. making schools yeah. 
you're actually saying what you've got is a mechanics here of change through process change. They would say, well, free schools exist as a concept, yeah. but in fact, yeah. there is a sense of a, a guiding hand influencing the outcomes by changing process. I, 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 in I, fact, I, so the question, Stephen, is sorry, if, yes. if you were you know, asking me to put you on the spot as a visionary in education, where do you see free schools in five years' time? Is it a red herring? Is it something that's going to exist and has learning crop up in limited well, areas, whether it's expansion or in places like London? I, I think it, it, it's going to depend on what you actually mean. Insofar as free schools are just new academies and not red area, they're going to happen. Because um, if that becomes the standard mechanism by which you establish a new school or a new academy, well, then, then these things are going to happen. I, 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 I think there has been something that's changed here, and, and you know, as I started reflecting back. I think it's now very difficult, it's much more difficult, I've seen both the process to come along as a parent, so I'll stick in a bit, I'll probably go to school. You've got you know, the track record of education, your personnel, the people who are named, the, the requirements that's now in there weren't there before. It just looked to me as though, whether civil servant somewhere in some of the room, but oldest said, we'd better rewrite some of this because of all of this. It, it just looked like that. When I looked at the two things, what, when I thought, I can still write this, on behalf of Compton Academy Trust with Compton Village College, because I can ask these questions, but how you answer them if you just said that's why I wasn't at all clear. Um, my understanding about where a lot of the bids are coming now are from some of the chains of academies. Um, EACT, I think, I'm told. Uh, is that Bruce Liddington's lot? Uh, I think they, they have been quoted as saying they're putting in a lot of proposals for school. That's quite a different model, therefore. Um, I think Michael Gove himself is, is obviously very strongly struck by these KIPP schools and some of the th things in certain parts of the states around New York, etc., that he would say had a real impact and improve education and educational chances for um, uh, children in particular situations, often challenging situations, and, and this is a dynamic that can allow that to happen. Uh, we we'll just have to wait to see. To some extent, any of us sitting in this room could, could actually choose to do that now in, in this new world. I, I mean, I think this will happen. I just think the groups that... I, I think my, my own understanding, what I think I saw happening, perhaps, at this is all say very informal, was who would then take forward this agenda and a real concern with... If it was a group of people at a certain conference, they're crumbs, that's interesting. And there will be, it will be very interesting who has submitted all the proposals now. They might now come from what might be deemed to be more mainstream, depending on your view about some of the, these academy chains. I think one thing you realise is some of these academy chains, here's another, but are becoming very big players in the new national network. Some of them have already got a lot of academy. John you know, said the point is we don't have a view to take on to, but there are a few that do. If they're also putting in a lot of proposals for quite a lot of new schools as well, they're becoming remarkably significant and potentially powerful players in the new system. Um, and, and I think they're a group that anyone would want to be very interested in, perhaps keep an eye on it, in, in this system. And I think then there will also be more individualised, smaller localised uh, developments and solutions, perhaps some of the ones you've heard about this afternoon, and our own one included, that might also be part of that. that that's what I think I can see happening.